in case you have just joined us, seven people uh, are reported missing at this point, the seven astronauts on board. Steve? Peter, we have the reaction from Vice President Bush, who has uh, spoken with reporters. Let's listen. No, no more than anyone else knows. How just a terrible to tragedy. Well, just enormous tragedy and, and uh, what does this mean for this, this space shuttle? Great concern future? for the families of people. A horrible feeling on all of that. Well, I think it's way too early to know that. I mean, it's been an extraordinarily, you know, viable program, and this is just a tragic thing. So I, I really don't have any detail on it. The except the motion. I've been, saw the president. was in there to help tell him about it, and then went in afterward to see him, and his you know, concerns are the same for the families and everybody else involved in all of this. Well, as, just as I've described, with great concern for the families and the, and the, the uh, you know, not, not uh, no, no specific things on that. Yeah, and then I walked back in to see him just now. You went in to tell him with whom? Well, it's, it's all over the, you know, just a whole bunch of people were in there when we walked in. He was doing some briefing, but then afterwards I... I saw him, and he's obviously very, very concerned about this. No, I think I, well, I think maybe point, I can't remember who was first. Everybody just went in there. No, not then, no. No, he was being briefed. Huh? No, I had seen a minute as somebody came rushing in and told me about it. I flicked it on, then went down to be sure he knew about it. But, well, he went in. Yeah, he went into the little, his little study, you know, down there and went in and turned off. I, I, I went back to my office. I just wanted to be sure he knew about it. As you look at the recovery area in the Atlantic Ocean off Cape Canaveral, Florida, we can testify, attest to the great shock at the White House, as there has been also at the Soviet Embassy. The Soviets have already issued a statement soaring, saying on behalf of the Soviet Embassy how they extend their deep condolences and sympathy to the American people in connection with this enormous tragedy. That is power on the solids or on the liquids, and so that is exactly what had taken place. They were high enough so they would not endanger the orbiter from too much pressure and were given that order that they could proceed to uh, what, increase the power. What are some of the things that can go wrong at that moment? Well, you have a very large external tank of very volatile liquid hydrogen and oxygen, and uh, you're just simply, it's like in uh, an automobile, you are putting more fuel. You're pushing down on the accelerator. You're putting more fuel to bring more uh, power. And, of course, at this point, we don't know whether it was one of the solids. We don't know whether it was the liquid engines or not. There's just uh, no way to know at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd planned to speak to you tonight to report on the State of the Union. But the events of earlier today have led me to change those plans. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. Nineteen years ago, almost to the day, we lost three astronauts in a terrible accident on the ground. But we've never lost an astronaut in flight. We've never had a tragedy like this. And perhaps we've forgotten the courage it took for the crew of the shuttle. But they, the Challenger 7, were aware of the dangers, but overcame them and did their jobs brilliantly. We mourn seven heroes. Michael Smith, Dick Scobie, Judith Resnick, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Gregory Jarvis, and Krista Mikulov. We mourn their loss as a nation together. The families of the seven, we cannot bear, as you do, the full impact of this tragedy. But we feel the loss, and we're thinking about you so very much. Your loved ones were daring and brave, and they had that special grace, that special spirit that says, give me a challenge, and I'll meet it with joy. They had a hunger to explore the universe and discover its truths. They wished to serve, and they did. They served all of us. We've grown used to wonders in this century. It's hard to dazzle us. 
But for 25 years, the United States space program has been doing just that. We've grown used to the idea of space, and perhaps we forget that we've only just begun. We're still pioneers. They, the members of the Challenger crew, were pioneers. And I want to say something to the school children of America who were watching the live coverage of the shuttle's takeoff. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to follow them. I've always had great faith in and respect for our space program, and what happened today does nothing to diminish it. We don't hide our space program. We don't keep secrets and cover things up. We do it all up front and in public. That's the way freedom is, and we wouldn't change it for a minute. We'll continue our quest in space. There will be more shuttle flights and more shuttle crews, and yes, more volunteers, more civilians, more teachers in space. Nothing ends here. Our hopes and our journeys continue. I want to add that I wish I could talk to every man and woman who works for NASA or who worked on this mission and tell them your dedication and professionalism have moved and impressed us for decades and we know of your anguish. We share it. There's a coincidence today. On this day, 390 years ago, the great explorer Sir Francis Drake died aboard ship off the coast of Panama. In his lifetime, the great frontiers were the oceans and the historian later said he lived by the sea, died on it, and was buried in it. Well, today, we can say of the Challenger crew, their dedication was, like Drake's, complete. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us for the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them, this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye, and slipped the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. Thank you. Speaking from the Oval Office, President Reagan evoking the memories of Francis Drake, who lost his life on this day more than three centuries ago. And if you will forgive a personal observation, speaking with great eloquence to the school children, saying it's part of the process of exploration and discovery that the future belongs to the brave, not to the faint of heart. Not very long from now, on most of these stations around the country, World News Tonight, as I said earlier, on the impact of this tragedy, both school teacher in space was to reach out to this new generation of youngsters, to tell them about space, to excite them about the prospects of going to this new frontier. And the president talked too about Sir Francis Drake, who was an explorer of the same magnitude of an earlier time. Incidentally, it may be helpful to those of you who are parents that we had here earlier today a child psychiatrist who talked about how you might deal with the trauma that will set in in a household both among adults and children. And what he said to us was that you should encourage the children to talk about it and share with them your own grief and your own shock and your own emotional feeling. And he suggested as well, it's not a good time for confrontation, not a good time to tell them to stop watching television or to stop reading about it or to stop talking about it. He suggested too that it may be a good idea to ask them about the reaction of their pals, the other youngsters, boys and girls, and how they feel about it. In other words, get at it through the back door. But the important thing is, he said, is that as a family, to deal with all of this together, collectively, to show the children that you too feel for what has happened today, and that you know that life will go on, and that you'd like to share this very troubling experience with them. Chris Wallace at the White House tonight. Where do we go from here, Chris, in terms of what the president has in mind? He sent Vice President George Bush to the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral, Florida, and we're told now that the vice president will be returning this evening, right? He's going down there symbolically to represent the administration. Well, I think that's right. There were two points, uh, two charges that Vice President Bush had as he headed to... Uh to uh, the Kennedy Space Center, and those were, first of all, to talk to the families. A number of the families of the seven members of the crew were there at the Cape, and the president wanted Vice President Bush to express his personal condolences on their loss. 
Uh, secondly, to in effect give a presidential push to the investigation of the accident. It's going to be handled by NASA, but the president clearly wanted his vice president there to say that he is desperately interested in finding out exactly what happened.